Hello everyone, glad to be back. Today is 3rd of August, now it's 15 past 10 in the morning Moscow time. I'm Levan Gudadze and this is my first update for a day in which I will share all the main news that are making headlines in Russian media outlets and Russian language pages on different internet platforms. Second update will be a little bit late in the afternoon on my Patreon page in which I will share additional news that will be reported by Russian media. Uh, if you are interested uh, in, in my Patreon, you can see a link under this video in the description box or in the pinned comment. And by the way, before I start, let me make a little announcement. Uh, towards the end of uh, this update, I will share with you some news that are uh, related to this project. Uh, you may find it interesting, so hopefully you will stay uh, towards the uh, end. And while you are watching or listening, this uh, update please consider to click like button and uh, leave some commentary because uh, more likes and comments definitely influence uh, youtube's uh, inc incredibly suppressive algorithm and uh, it does allows me to reach wider audience um, that's been said let's let's talk about news now and uh, first of all I will share with you breaking news for this moment, for this morning, which is that Russian air defense systems did shut down uh, six Ukrainian drones in Kaluga region. This was reported by uh, re regional governor Vladislav Shapsha, and according to him, uh, all six drones uh, uh, were trying to pass through Kaluga region. They were uh, destroyed, and there is no casualties or significant damage on the ground and by the way even though russian officials are not saying what was possible targets for these drones if we take a look um, on the map if we take a look on the map kaluga region is here by the way this is kaluga region and uh, as you can see it's not far away from uh, moscow so um, i assume targets uh, for these drones were located in Moscow, capital of uh, Russian Federation, and uh, well, because they were shut down, I guess uh, Russian Defense Ministry did make some uh, adjustments and uh, reinforce uh, air defense systems uh, in bordering regions so with Ukraine and uh, in uh, all the regions between Ukraine and Moscow to protect the uh, capital, and it does work. Uh, six drones were neutralized in uh, early hours of uh, this uh, morning so that's breaking news let me continue let me continue now and uh, we have a statement from um, we have statement from uh, Jan Gagin uh, aide of uh, head of DPR Donetsk People's Republic and according to him uh, Ukrainian so-called counteroffensive uh, did uh, slow down because of uh, in, in, in incredibly heavy uh, unbelievably heavy casualties that ukrainian forces did suffer during the previous two months since the beginning of this uh, counteroffensive which is uh, true of course and uh, quite logical and by the way before i continue let me share with you a quick update a quick update on the situation on the front line and as just uh, confirmed uh, Jan Gagin in his statement uh, we are seeing operational pause on main axis of uh, Ukrainian counteroffensive which is uh, Zaporozhye and uh, South Donetsk sectors of the front but I will start with Kherson region even though Ukrainian forces were trying to establish um, breached on the left bank a couple of weeks ago and uh, some ukrainian units still remain on the left bank um, overall situation overall situation is um, operational pause it's a deadlock and uh, all we see is uh, reckon operations mainly artillery duels uh, between the sides and fights for control over these small islands in the Dnieper delta nothing is happening that will influence overall situation on the front line when it comes to Zaporozhye and South Donetsk sectors of the, of the front as I said it's uh, also operational pause um, seems like Ukrainian forces run out of uh, steam uh, in uh, 
and there were main two main directions of recent activities of ukrainian units so first of all of course uh, rabotina settlement uh, in the uh, southern part of orekhov this is zaporozhia region and uh, during previous two weeks uh, ukrainian forces uh, did lost in this direction up to two brigades if we combine uh, losses in manpower and military equipment so without significant reinforcements uh, of Ukrainian uh, brigades, Ukrainian armed grouping in this area. I don't think they will be able to conduct, uh, um, to continue their local scale offensive operations. And uh, same we can say about this bridgehead between uh, Uglidar and Gulyaipoli and the name of Vremovsky ledge. Even though Ukrainian forces did manage to uh, establish partial control over the Staromayorska, this small settlement here. Russian uh, artillery, Russian frontline aviation are not allowing Ukrainian side to dig in in this settlement. And basically, uh, Staromayorska now is in gray zone when no one side has uh, full control over it. And this is important for Russian side because as long as uh, Ukrainian forces are unable to establish strongholds and uh, full control over this uh, settlement, uh, they cannot conduct uh, uh, significant offensive operations in the direction of Urajaina because uh, their supply lines will be cut off by Russian armed forces so I guess the fight in this area will uh, local scale skirmishes will continue but yet again uh, at least for now it seems like Ukrainian forces did run out of steam in this uh, area also Let's go to Donetsk uh, direction. Uh, main hot points, of course, Marinka. Main hot points are Marinka, uh, usually, which is on almost fully controlled by Russian forces. Only little part of it, like ten percent, maybe still under control of Ukrainian forces. Uh, also, Krasnogorovka, a hot point, and uh, uh, Avdeevka, but. Yet again, nothing is happening in the scale that will influence overall situation on the front line. It's a deadlock or operational pause. Uh, and it will continue this way, I believe, at least uh, as long as the uh, situation fin finally will resolve with this uh, Ukrainian so-called counteroffensive. When it comes to Bakhmut direction, as I reported uh, in previous days, seems like Russian forces regain initiative in the southern flank of Bakhmut, where Ukrainian forces were very actively trying to conduct offensive operations in the direction of uh, Kurdyumovka, in the direction of uh, uh, Klishevka and Andreevka. And uh, yesterday I did report that one of the Ukrainian brigades uh, in this area was basically decimated. Uh, that brigade, I guess, had to be withdrawn to get some uh, reinforcements, otherwise uh, it, it will uh, be unable to uh, uh, conduct any uh, any kind of operations, even defensive ones, because they had too much casualties. The name of that brigade was a tool or something like that. It was uh, based on uh, special forces of uh, Ukraine's uh, internal uh, Ministry of Internal Affairs. And even though we are uh, on daily basis receiving additional reports that uh, some Ukrainian units still are trying to conduct um, uh, local-scale offensives in the direction of Kurdyumovka, Klishevka, uh, Andreevka. As I said, Russian forces are managing not just to repeal all the Ukrainian offensives, but to regain initiatives in, uh, in major directions, especially in Klishevka direction. And they, according to some reports that I see on uh, Russian uh, telegram channels, they did manage to re-establish control over the uh, strongholds that was uh, lost uh, uh, during the previous uh, weeks of uh, fighting. And this is uh, when it comes to southern sectors of the front. We did have uh, some reports that Ukrainian forces yet again become a uh, little active in the direction of northern flank of Bakhmut. They did try to conduct uh, local scale offensive operations, but yet again, uh, as I predicted many times uh, before, and as I, as I said, initiative is totally in Russian hands, and uh, all the Ukrainian 
attempts, all the attempts from Ukrainian side to conduct some uh, more or less successful operations in this uh, direction are failing and uh, I will call those uh, offensives suicidal uh, operations because uh, they cannot uh, achieve anything in the direction of Yahidna, in the direction of Birkhovka, in the direction of Dubovo Vasilevka. Basically what Zelensky's regime and uh, this Ukrainian general Sirsky who is obsessed with Bakhmut for, for whatever reasons, all they are doing is sacrificing, sacrificing hundreds and thousands of uh, Ukrainian soldiers uh, for, uh, for no reason whatsoever, because they achieve uh, nothing in this uh, sector of the front. They may establish, uh, initially, they may establish some control over some irrelevant uh, in, uh, fields, and, uh, and that's it. And nowadays they are uh, forced to re retreat even from those uh, areas uh, after uh, losses uh, of uh, hundreds and thousands of soldiers and uh, hundreds of pieces of military equipment. When it comes to Seversk direction, we had some reports that Ukrainian forces did try some um, uh, local scale offensive operations in this area because they do realize that uh, because Russian uh, uh, armed forces had a significant success on the northern sectors of the front, especially on Liman Kupiansk uh, direction, they do probably realize that uh, next uh, uh, point of uh, Russian push, Russian offensives will be a Seversk direction. It just makes uh, sense, it's logical. And uh, because of it, I guess Zelensky's regime did make a decision to reinforce. Um, it's uh, arm grouping in the direction of Seversk. And uh, we had some reports that in direction of this um, settlement, uh, Belagorovka, there were some uh, fierce fighting between the, between the sides. But uh, yet again, initiative on the northern sectors of the front, totally in Russian hands. And I don't think Zelensky's regime will be able to hold on to its positions in Seversk direction for a long time. In next two to three weeks, we will probably see significant changes on the front line in this sector of the front. I'm quite sure Russian side will establish full control over the Belogorovka and Russian forces will begin to uh, encircle Seversk uh, uh, itself. But uh, yet again, uh, I'm not a military expert and my reading of big picture can be mistaken. Let's, uh, let's wait and see. And when it comes to northern sectors of the front, even though in previous days there were some uh, less activity, especially from Russian side, uh, well, uh, it's quite understandable because uh, for last uh, uh, months or even more now, uh, Russian forces did manage to significantly improve their positions in this uh, northern flanks, and uh, I guess they are now waiting for uh, uh, waiting for green light from Moscow to conduct uh, large-scale offensive operations because ground the ground is prepared for this. Uh, Russian forces have initiative uh, and. Uh, and it's uh, it's uh, all depends on Russian general staff now when we will see large scale offensive operation in, in that sector. Maybe yeah, we will see beginning of Russian offensive one situation will be resolved in the direction of Seversk. Just uh, because it's, it makes sense. I mean, uh, to stay on safe side and to make sure that uh, there are no threats from uh, eastern uh, sectors. Uh, I guess uh, Russian forces uh, need to establish control over the, uh, at least operational control over the this uh, bridgehead that uh, Zelensky's regime has in Seversk direction. To make sure that flanks are secure, uh, southern flanks of northern group uh, grouping of uh, Russian forces. And this is it for a, a quick summary of the situation on the Frontline, um, let's uh, continue with some other news now. And uh, by the way, it's operational pause on, on uh, all along the front line. That's what I will say. And if uh, in the southern sectors, 
expectations are that uh, Ukrainian forces will begin their second wave of uh, this counteroffensive in central and northern sectors of the front situation is completely different and uh, we are having expectations that uh, it's the Russian forces that will uh, conduct the large-scale offensive operation but yet again uh, I guess uh, I guess Russian side will wait a couple of more weeks to to, to see what will happen with this uh, Ukrainian counteroffensive if second wave will take place and uh, after that some uh, decisive actions will be taken on the central and northern sectors of the front let's continue now and this is Ria Novosti's uh, report according to which uh, oh, I did spoke about it that uh, Ukrainian counteroffensive have been uh, slowed so TASS news agency is reporting that um, Russian uh, aviation Frontline, uh, frontline aviation did destroy significant amount of uh, uh, Ukrainian armored vehicles in the direction of uh, Bogdanovka and uh, Klishevka. Uh, well, I just uh, spoke about this uh, sector of the front and I did mention that uh, it seems like initiative is uh, shifting uh, yet again from Ukrainian side to Russian side and without significant reinforcement of Ukrainian grouping in uh, southern flank of Bakhmut, I don't think they will be able to continue their offensive and uh, as we can see in this uh, uh, news bulletin here from TASS news agency Russian side uh, not just reinforce uh, that sector of the front but Russian side actively using long-range artillery or actively using frontline aviation and uh, it does uh, makes difference it does make significant difference as i said uh, one of the ukrainian brigades were just decimated in that uh, area let's uh, continue now and uh, well rt is reporting that's quite interesting uh rt is reporting that uh, According to articles in the uh, New York Times, uh, Ukrainian armed forces are giving up on Western battle tactics and are beginning to conduct uh, uh, long-range artillery duels, uh, return to uh, Soviet tactics basically, and they are trying to uh, conduct artillery duels between the side, uh, be uh, with, with the Russian uh, uh, side and uh, long-range battles and uh, well uh, at, at one hand this is uh, can be understandable because ukrainian forces lost too many military equipment too much uh, too many soldiers and too much uh, military equipment during this uh, so-called counteroffensive according to official statements of russian defense ministry in uh, june since since june up to now ukrainian forces lost uh, at least 40 to 45 thousand soldiers uh, killed and uh, wounded and uh, uh, thousands and thousands of pieces of military equipment armored uh, personal carriers tanks artillery uh, pieces uh, air defense systems and and so on so it's uh, quite understandable that uh, ukrainian forces cannot uh, operate at least all on on every sector of the front with these western tactics when small groups are trying to conduct some maneuverable warfare uh, with active use of uh, armored personal carriers it just did not uh, work and we did we did see many 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 and many times uh, on on video footage that were circulating on internet uh, this uh, failed attempts uh, of uh, ukrainian forces to conduct this maneuverable warfare where when three five armored uh, personal carriers or armored vehicles are moving uh, in direction of uh, front line in direction of russian uh, strongholds uh, but uh, uh, the majority of them are destroyed even before uh, even before uh, Ukrainian uh, soldiers are able to uh, leave those uh, those uh, armored vehicles so that tactic definitely is not working in uh, case of uh, Ukrainian uh, battlefield for many many reason and uh, it's not surprising that Ukrainians now will try to 
use again uh, Soviet uh, era tactics. Question is, will they have enough ammunition to do so? Because uh, Soviet tactic does uh, include uh, heavy use of artillery. And as we know, uh, Zelensky's regime for quite a long time now has uh, significant issues with, uh, with shell supply. Let me continue now, and Ria Novosti is uh, reporting that, um, well, according to Asia Times, and I believe this uh, magazine is uh, associated with the Foreign Ministry of uh, China. Uh, so according to that uh, uh, newspaper, Ukraine did uh, broke a main promise that they give uh, to uh, US, to Washington, that they would not use uh, Western military equipment, especially US military equipment on Russian soil. And uh, because uh, Zelensky's regime are using Western military equipment on, on Russian soil, and this is documented, uh, relationships between Washington and Kiev are deteriorating, and uh, uh, this deterioration uh, of relationships with Washington are uh, basically uh, causing significant uh, issues with the relationships between Kiev and uh, EU member states also, or some other NATO member states. Yet again, by the way, uh, I, I guess we are closing into point uh, to, to point when uh, West Western elites will start to distance themselves distance Western states from uh, Zelensky's regime. And uh, it will become, this will become much more visible as uh, as uh, we will close into point when uh, Poland and some other NATO member states that have been united in some uh, new anti-Russian coalition will send their troops to Western regions of Ukraine. And by the way, yesterday I did report that uh, between Poland and Ukraine, for example, some diplomatic row have uh, uh, occurred. And uh, this is also an indicator, I guess, that, uh, well, NATO member states are kind of beginning to, beginning to distance themselves from Zelensky's regime. It may not be too obvious, uh, for this moment, but uh, me personally, I did see enough indicators to 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 say that uh, process of uh, uh, process of uh, distancing from Ukraine by NATO member states have have begun. And uh, in this regard, I will definitely agree with the uh, Asia Times that uh, Zelensky's regime itself did play significant role to provoke such a uh, you know some turmoil between uh, Ukraine and uh, NATO member states because uh, many, many uh, EU members uh, and even US officials did say quite many times really that they are not encouraging Kyiv to use uh, Western made military equipment on Russian soil. But Zelensky's regime don't really care about it, isn't it? Uh, and uh, let me continue task news agencies and by the way um, to uh, to make sure that everyone uh, has a good enough information that it's factual that uh, the next regime is using uh, NATO weapons on Russian soil just remember these provocations in Belgorod region for example when uh, Ukrainian saboteurs entered the uh, Belgorod region and uh, what kind of military equipment they were using. NATO military equipment, isn't it? And those weapons are in Russian hands now. So it's factual. It's 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 true that the, uh, despite promises, uh, Zelensky's regime uh, does use uh, NATO uh, equipment uh, on against Russia on Russian soil. And of course, uh, from Russian standpoint, Zaporozhye region, Kherson region, uh, Donbass, DPR and LPR, uh, and Crimea also are Russian. But uh, uh, Western states are not recognizing it. But Belgorod region, for example, 
are undisputedly part of Russia, even from Western standpoint, isn't it? So, and uh, what about strikes on Moscow? These drone strikes on Moscow. Is Moscow disputed territory? Of course not. So let me let me continue. Uh, I guess uh, Washington, London, uh, Brussels will will use any excuse now to little by little distance themselves from um, Zelensky's regime and from Ukraine because, uh, as I said many times before, we are entering we are entering a stage in this conflict when uh, main topic in um, in uh, discussions between the sides uh, behind the scenes will be uh, disintegration of Ukraine and which part which party will control which, which regions of Ukraine. I'm 100% sure after this conflict will end that there will be no more Ukraine as a state on political map. I'm 100% sure about this. So let me say 99%. Because there may be slight chance that uh, Kiev and surrounding regions will remain as a quasi-state under name of Ukraine, but uh, it's only slight chance on that, maybe one percent. Let me let me continue now. And uh, past news agencies reporting that that uh, U.S. Uh, do not expect any uh, concrete uh, decisions or results from uh, upcoming uh, talks uh, on Ukraine in uh, Jider uh, in Saudi Arabia, which will take place uh, in a few days time, 5th and 6th of August, if I'm not mistaken. And well, uh, this time this statement from State Department of US is uh, quite understandable because uh, not just uh, US, but I guess nobody in this world are expecting any breakthrough on those talks, especially because uh, Russia was not invited. And uh, probably all, we, all agree, we all will agree that uh, without Russia's participation, any talks about uh, resolving this uh, Ukrainian crisis is uh, pointless. It's uh, as simple as that. Tass News Agency also reporting that Putin and Erdogan did had a phone conversation between each other and they discussed uh, quite a few topics, including Green Deal. And uh, Putin did said that Russia is ready to join this uh, uh, Green Deal once again if uh, if uh, West Western states will fulfill their obligations towards Russia. And uh, Erdogan uh, did uh, stated on, on on his part that Turkey is ready also to uh, join this deal uh, straight away. And uh, well, Turkey has quite significant interest in this uh, deal, but yet again, until Russian uh, interests will be uh, recognized and fulfilled by Western elites, uh, I guess Moscow would not uh would not uh, resume this uh, deal it's uh, it's uh, quite simple as it was stated from uh, from very beginning and putin and erdogan also did discuss uh, preparation of putin's visit in uh, turkey which will i believe also take place in uh, uh, this month in august and uh, well i did see some reports today on on some uh, media outlets that some significant uh, decisions may be made while uh, Putin's during the Putin's visit in uh, Turkey and some significant uh, contracts may be signed between uh, uh, between uh, businesses of two countries uh, well uh, when it comes to Turkey even though it's not always easy to understand policies of Erdogan uh, for Russia, Russia never hide that. Uh, for, for Russia, it's important to keep good uh, uh, working relationships with, with, with Turkey. And uh, if Erdogan will act uh, as a, at least uh, as a neutral or not the enemy of Russia, then I guess um, Moscow and Ankara will manage to 
maintain working relationships despite uh, recent steps from uh, Erdogan uh, including release of those uh, Nazi terrorists uh, Ukrainian Nazi terrorists that were uh, in Turkey well uh, if nothing like uh, that uh, will happen uh, in the future if uh, Erdogan wouldn't provoke Moscow then I guess it will be possible to maintain some work some level of working relationships with Turkey even though trust uh, uh, trust uh, probably was damaged between the sides let me continue TASS news agency is reporting that uh, Chinese ambassador in Russia did made uh, quite a few very serious statements and um, uh, he said that uh, and let me give you a name of Chinese ambassador Chijan uh, Hanch Hui. Uh, so he made uh, statements that uh, NATO is um, trying to destroy uh, peaceful uh, atmosphere in uh, uh, in the Pacific in the Pacific region and are playing negative uh, role and. Um, And uh, well, China will China will do its 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 best to minimize uh, damage that is done by NATO's activity and by basically U.S. activity because U.S. is a major player in that uh, region. And uh, well, uh, unfortunately, unfortunately, uh, U.S. has. Uh, too much uh, resources in uh, in the Pacific region to play good role or bad role, and uh, at least for now, while uh, these extremely aggressive neoliberals and neocons are running show in U.S., at least for now, uh, U.S. influence in that region have been used as a negative force. It's uh, obvious for everybody i guess and uh, well i can understand uh, um, where is that uh, chinese ambassador is expressing when it comes to western or nato activity in that uh, region hopefully in 2024 there will be new administration in in uh, washington more adequate administration and that they will use their influence not just in in the indo pacific region but all around the world for uh for good not for destruction let me continue and um, a commerçant newspaper is reporting that uh, borel the head of uh, eu's uh, foreign policy did made uh, quite uh, yet another uh, strange statements uh, really and he said that cheap uh, grain from russia uh, makes uh, uh, poor countries uh, be dependent on Russia and uh, well maybe this uh, extremely stupid individual don't really understands what he is talking about but uh, uh, I mean he is complaining now that Russia is supporting poor countries I mean he is basically openly saying that he don't cares if people will 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 uh, die from hunger in in countries in need he don't cares about that all he cares is uh, uh, is russian influence to be somehow minimized everywhere uh, uh, western elites can can achieve this so basically this warmonger and the mass murderer is openly saying that he is all all, all for people to die with hunger from hunger that's what he's saying this stupid uh, mass murderer and criminal a shame on europe that they have uh, such uh, uh, disgraceful individuals as uh, in position of elites that's truly disgrace for uh, for europe let me continue now and the reinforced is reporting that bolivia bolivia uh made the decision to uh, join BRICS and they did send a notice to BRICS um, uh, 
member states, uh, which is a great deal, by the way. And uh, I did share on my Telegram uh, this morning uh, number of countries that uh, did apply, officially apply to join BRICS. And let me uh, give you names of these countries. So Algeria, Argentina, Bahrain, Bangladesh, Egypt, Ethiopia, Indonesia, Iran, Mexico, Nigeria, Saudi Arabia, United Arab Emirates, Venezuela, and now Bolivia, I guess also. Quite a, uh, quite a number of uh, states are already want to join uh, BRICS, uh, which uh, once again highlights importance of uh, this organization and uh, perspectives of uh, of multipolar polarity and multipolar world which is uh, has been created very be before very our eyes in in real time despite all the attempts from western so-called elites to derail this process and a few more uh, news uh, about some economical stuff rt is reporting that the us uh, lost the top credit credit rating uh, which is uh, true. Um, Fitch uh, uh, rating, uh, Fitch company, this uh, famous company that are, makes ratings, did uh, downgrade a US credit rating from uh, AAA to AA, but by the way, it's still uh, high level, top level. Maybe not AAA, but uh, well. Uh, U.S. is a major economy in this world, and uh, and uh, um, and to be honest, uh, it is in best interest of this world if U.S. will U.S. economy will stay strong. It's in the best interest of this world if U.S. economy will stay strong. Problem that coming from U.S. is uh, is. Uh, warmonger bloodthirsty uh, ruling class that us has so we should dis distinguish this this two there are some some criminals that are in power in us and then there are us and us citizens and uh, uh, i mean we may be against this uh, bloodthirsty elites but we should never be against uh, ordinary citizens of us and we should never want to uh, see any destruction uh, in in US, which will hurt first of all ordinary citizens. So that's why I'm saying it is in best interest of this world, US economy, to stay uh, strong. And uh, a few more topics. Uh, also, Art is reporting the German company was to continue business with uh, Russia. Well, we almost on a daily basis now are uh, receiving information that more and more companies are refusing to leave Russia or finding ways to somehow maintain their uh, interests in, in Russia. And uh, this German company under the name of uh, Klaas, this is Agricultural Machinery Manufacturer, did make decision to stay in Russia and uh, operate as uh, usual because after all Russia is one of the major buyers of uh, uh, agricultural uh, machinery harvesters uh, and 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 uh, you name it everything so it's quite understandable and uh, this company is trying to justify these actions because uh, well Russia is uh, one of the uh, bread baskets, major bread baskets of this world. And uh, well, uh, this company by staying in 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 Russian in Russia and helping Russian agri agricultural sector to 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 maintain itself and to grow, indirectly helping uh, uh, entire world and food security of this world, which is uh, true, by the way. But we all do understand that uh, this company using this topic as an excuse because Russia is a major market for them. And uh, of course, they want to stay here and, and uh, make their billions and billions on, on every year. 
And this is going to be last news for today's update. Russian ruble is continuing to lose its position little by little. And uh, well, it did reach 94 rubles for uh, one dollar. Uh, so, well, as I predicted quite a long time ago, I guess before end of this year, we will see exchange rate between ruble and dollar will reach 100 or even more rubles for one dollar. And, uh, well, let's hope, uh, let's hope. Uh, I mean, I'm quite sure head of Russian Central Bank, Nabulina, is, uh, I mean, one of the most uh, qualified persons in uh, among all the heads of central banks and uh, even though I, I disagree with some politics of central bank uh, well i should admit that uh, uh, despite all the sanctions and all the pressure from the western elites russian economy is withstanding this pressure and uh, uh, if uh, if uh, uh, and this achievement uh, and it is achievement, isn't it? Uh, this achievement uh, directly or indirectly are uh, results of uh, work of Central Bank of Russia and Finance Ministry. So it's easy to criticize, but when you try to see bigger picture, uh, you should. I mean, you have to uh, recognize that. Uh, Yes, there are some problems. Russian ruble becoming a little bit weaker, but after all, economy is withstanding this huge pressure. So before we start criticizing Nabiolina or any any other person, uh, we should think: uh, Will uh, other policies uh, uh, protect Russian economy in better ways? I don't know. After all, I'm not financial expert. So, well, I have to. Uh, I have to trust the uh, professionalism of um, Nabiulina and the economical block of Russian government. Because, uh, at least for now, they are doing quite a good uh, job to, to uh, protect Russia and Russian economy. And when it comes to weak ruble, well, of course it's bad uh, for us ordinary humans but because at some point it will it will influence on inflation but uh, in other hand in other hand um, weak ruble uh, does gives uh, some advantage to russian uh, big business which is also important so anyway this is it for uh, this is it for now I hope you will find this uh, update interesting and if so please uh, and if so please uh, uh, click that uh, oh by the way I, I did uh, announce this uh, few topics that I, I was thinking to talk about it uh, towards end of this update first of all uh, as you remember I did had some issues with buy me a coffee uh, in in previous months so all the issues were resolved. Uh, I did receive uh, recently late, later from administration of Buy Me Coffee and they did said that uh, all the technical issues were resolved. There should be no problem, no more. And uh, well, yesterday I did manage to withdraw funds from uh, my uh, major page on Buy Me Coffee, first page on my uh, Buy Me Coffee. And because of it, I made decision to uh, deactivate a new page on buy me a coffee and while doing so i did uh, refund all donations every single donations on that new page so uh, don't be surprised if you will receive donation back uh, that's that was me uh, because i was shutting down that page on a uh, new page on buy me a coffee I, I made decision to refund uh, those donations i'm very grateful for for your support but uh, i was thinking this is the right way to do it just to make sure that there is a, a minimal uh, misunderstanding and after all uh, to use one page on buy me a coffee is much more convenient so from now on i will i will have uh, all the 
page on i will use old page on buy me a coffee which i used for uh, since basically since the beginning and uh, uh, yes that's one topic that's one topic and the uh, second topic is that uh, by the way as i announced a few days ago i was invited on i was invited on this um, channel uh, dialogue works and i had a conversation on this channel i did participate in the program and uh, if you are interested to see it you can check uh, description box under this video you will see link of uh, dialogue works there and uh, yes i encourage you to subscribe because as you can see here very interesting guests are participating in programs here interesting channel so and that was a second topic that i was thinking to talk about and uh, what else am i forgetting something okay uh, this is it this is it i guess uh, um, hopefully you will find this uh, update interesting and if so please uh, please uh, click that like button I leave some commentary about any topic you like and uh, if you can please share links to my videos or my or my channel with your friends on facebook telegram twitter or any other platform that you are active on and if you find this channel interesting informative useful and uh, one that deserves to exist please consider to support with small donations through paypal buy me coffee or by subscribing to my patreon page you will see links under this video in the description box or in the pinned comment this is it for now i wish you a great day and take care